Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So I wanted to make a quick video because a lot of people were running into a common problem when trying to use my module, PSG of Plotter. Now they're running into this issue when, when they're trying to import the module or using a command in the module, and it would say it cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system. Now running the scripts on Windows is by default disabled on the machine. And you can check this by doing git execution policy and seeing that it's restricted. Now, how do you enable scripts to be run? Well, you can do set execution policy, do dash execution policy, and set it to remote sign, and that should fix it for our purposes. And you click Y, but you'll see here, we actually come across an error also, saying access is denied. So what you need to do is run this as administrator. So you wanna close out that session, and then open up PowerShell, and then you can right click on this, and then click run as administrator, or you can click uh, control shift enter. So let me go ahead and make this bigger. And now if we run import module again, you'll see that we still get the error, even if we're as admin. So let's go ahead and try to set the execution poly policy to remote sign, click yes again, and we can see that we did it successfully this time. And you can uh, go through the commands that you previously ran by doing the up arrow. So let's go ahead and try to import the module again. And here we can see that it worked correctly this time. Now we can run the commands in this module. So git chia max uh, parallel count now runs just fine. Now I wanted to take this time to talk about security in PowerShell because you might be asking yourself, well, does this make my system less secure? You know, if it's by default, is that a security measure by Windows? And to some extent, yes, but really no. And I'll show you why, but first let's go over to the documentation of execution policy. Okay, so let's just quickly go over this about execution policy documentation page, and I'll link this URL in the description so that you can fully read over it if you want. Now you might be saying, hey, on the very first line, it says it's a safety feature. And while that is true, you can read on and see that it's not a security system. And what's the difference between a security system and a safety feature, you know, in regards to PowerShell? Well, you can kind of think of it really as an analogy to like having a safety lock on a gun. Now, does a safety lock on a gun prevent you from accidentally shooting a gun or unintentionally shooting a gun? Yes, absolutely. Does it restrict you from shooting guns entirely? No, not at all. So that's essentially what the execution policy is doing. It's preventing you from accidentally running scripts or running scripts or code that you don't intentionally mean to run. And for most users on Windows, they're not going to be running scripts. So it makes sense to have it restricted by default to prevent users from finding a script online, running it without knowing what they're running. Now, I will show you, I'll demonstrate this, that how it prevents you from easily running scripts, but it doesn't prevent malicious code from running on your machine if it becomes compromised. And I just want to further demonstrate this. So if you haven't read PowerShell in a month of lunches and you want to get into PowerShell, well, these are the books to really get started. Now, if you read their analogy, they're a little bit more extreme in their analogy because they say that it's like a little hinge, you know, a plastic uh, shield over a big red button that launches nuclear missiles. But this is just to prevent from people accidentally pressing the button. But it's not intended to stop someone to take, you know, deliberate action to run a script. And let me just demonstrate this so that you fully understand. So let me minimize this window. So I have a script and it's very harmless, just called write host hello world. Now let's go ahead and set the execution policy back to restrict it so that we cannot run um, scripts. I'm gonna click yes. And then let's go ahead and try to run this script. So if we do PowerShell and we try to run this script, so um, users, Mr. Pig, desktop, and then hello world, you can see that I get the same thing that we got uh, above, cannot load because running scripts is disabled on this system. And now th you might be saying, well, this prevented you from running scripts. Well, this is very, very easy to get around because you can just do PowerShell and then do execution policy right before it, if I spell that right, do bypass, and now let's just, let me just copy this, paste it, and you can see that the script ran just fine. So did it prevent any code from actually running on the machine? 
no. If someone wants to run code and they have access to your machine, well, they're, they can run code. Now, with that being said, I will like to, to, to warn people that they really should be cautious before installing modules or running scripts that they find on Reddit or anywhere else. Now, there's a lot, there's plenty of tools out there that are perfectly good and, you know, it's just by good people trying to provide tools for the community. But really, if you don't know what you're running, you're always running a risk. So now I know my modules are safe and you can even go look at them yourself here. And if you are good at PowerShell, I would be happy if you want to improve them. Um, because, you know, I can't make them as good as I want to because I have a limited amount of time. And, you know, this is where you're installing it from. Now, PowerShell Gallery is hosted by PowerShell. Does that mean all modules on PowerShell Gallery are safe? No, it does not. Because you can just upload these modules. Like, I, there's nothing really preventing me from uploading this module. Now, I do hope or assume I don't know for sure that they do monitor the code a little bit to make to just scan it really quickly to make sure that there's nothing malicious in the code. But it's very easy to hide malicious code within safe code. So I will take caution. Don't don't think that everything on the PS Gallery is safe, and that's why it, by default it's listed as untrusted um, and PowerShell. So if you run into PS Gallery as an untrusted module, well, you can do um, set um, ps repository and then do dash dash name do ps gallery and then do do a installation policy and you can do trusted and this will change it to a trusted um, repository but it is untrusted by default so if you do come across that you can just um, ignore it you know for this module but you know just be wary that not all modules on the PS Gallery could be safe. Now, a lot of them and most of them are. Now, one more quick note. Um, you also might get something about NuGet being out, outdated or that you need to update the NuGet package, something like this where it says your version and needs to be updated. You can click yes on that. It just needs to be, the NuGet is how PowerShell talks to the PS Gallery to install modules. Now, I would like to mention that my PowerShell module is a work in progress and that there might be some bugs. And if you do come across those, you know, I would like you to, you know, submit an issue or put them in the comments so that I can address them. Because a couple people, you know, I had one person send me this screenshot showing, showing eight cores and outputted 32 th threads, where his CPU only has 16 threads. So clearly something's not right here. In another case, you know, someone you know, had two CPUs on one motherboard. Well, I didn't take that into account in writing it, but he sent that in and I was able to, you know, rewrite the code and fix it in that particular case. Now, I do test these before releasing this code and releasing the videos, but, you know, writing code is always a process of iteration and, you know, finding out the bugs as you run the code. Now, I do apologize if you run across those. I do try to be careful and only output code once I think it's stable. But, you know, if there is a problem, please report it to me. And if you are good at PowerShell, you know, please go to my GitHub and take a look at it and see where maybe you can improve or you know tell me that something might have a un you know might not put output what i think it might output so i hope this video was helpful uh, in regards to execution policy and getting the module working and you know just letting you know the expectations of the module as well and i do want to just thank everybody to getting me over a thousand subscribers i really was not expecting to get this many subscribers and i really just didn't plan to post more than one video about Chia. I just posted this one Harvester video because so many people on Reddit were asking how to set one up. And people's feedback was just so positive and, you know, they really found it helpful that um, I re decided to keep, re keep releasing videos on things that I kind of went through with Chia and that I could possibly share with the community. So I am very happy that people find these videos useful and I do plan to keep making some more. So until next time, bye.